Howdy everybody. I'm back here talking, doing the advent of code challenges. We're on day two. Um, if you watched my previous video, I just did it in Rust and now I'm going to try and do it in Haskell. So Haskell, Haskell, Haskell. I, I don't know what you actually call it. Uh, maybe, should we just look that up right now? So, um, Haskell how to say. Haskell. Oh, it's, oh. Haskell. Haskell. Okay, it's Haskell. Got it. At least that's what Google says. If Google is wrong, someone let me know. Anyway, we're implementing it in Haskell. So what does it look like at a high level? I won't go through the whole thing again. Uh, but essentially, the trebuchet from the previous episode landed you up on an island up high in the sky, and you're walking to try and solve the problem with an elf, and you're playing a game, right? He has a bag with some colors, a random number of red, green, and blue colors in it, and he's going to pull them out each round. And for part one, the idea is to just check and make sure a round is valid. Basically, uh, the elf is going to... The elf says there's only 12 red, 13 green, and 14 blue cubes. And so he wants you to tell you which of the games are valid and then sum up the valid game IDs. So in this example with the 12, 13, and 14, game three can't be valid because it has 20 red and there can only be 12. And uh, the same thing, I believe, with game four, yes, where there's 15 blue, and but you're only allowed 14. So games three and four could not be valid, which means only games one, two, and five. And if you sum up their game IDs, one, two, four, or one, two, and five, you get eight. And that's the solution to it. Uh, okay, so let's just start there with Haskell. Our input is quite a bit larger. There's Some of them have many, many more rounds. Um, but the, I don't think the logic will be too tough. I think where I'm going to struggle here is uh, I need to turn this string input into these rounds, right? So it's probably helpful to create some data types. Again, I've only been doing Haskell for two weeks, so let's just uh, create your own data type. Uh, uh, a data shape has is this is that what we want a data or a type yeah i think we want to do this something along these lines okay this looks familiar i i remember doing this part of it so it'll be something like that uh if we look back in the rust version we had a similar thing for a round where we had a red green and blue and then for each of the rounds uh or a game had a vector of those rounds. So that would be a list, right? And then it had its own ID. So let's just try and implement those in Haskell. Here we go. Can we do it? Uh, I start talking and I've already forgotten so we have a data round, which is, should we have a color? How do you do enums? Like data color, red, green, blue, data round. We'll have a yeah, the last time I actually didn't do colors because I just, I had like a red, an int, green, blue, int, driving show, yeah, that's fine. It was, it was more like this, and the reason why it was helpful to do it like this was, um, did I not do that right? Oh, it probably wants it to be, yeah. Oh, oh, can I use the types? 
the enums here. Does that work? It doesn't look like it does. Like this? Okay. Let's just do it like that. So I'm going to have a round. And I'm going to have a game. We're just going to have an ID and a uh, set around. Um, oh, that should be caps, right? Okay, so now the question is how do I parse each game and each round? Uh, so we, uh, the AI may be able to help us with this, but I kind of want to try and do it myself. So if we have a parse round function, which, it, yeah, a string to a round. Um, it's actually not, it's thinking I'm going to get like a red, green, and blue, but that's not the case. If I look at the test input, I'm going to get these tuples of blue, red, green. So maybe I want to go even smaller, think smaller and start with just this right here. I say parse, like this is a round and this is a color. And I'm gonna get an, an int and a string out of this. Um, how do I split in Haskell? Words? Yeah, so I'm going to get um, parse color uh, It's going to be like head of the int is going to be the head of parts and uh, as an int or what is it? What is it? Uh, read read head of parts as an int and then the rest of it is going to be uh, unwords tail parts, word parts equals words all. Okay. I actually don't, it, I'm only going to get red, green, or blue, so I don't think I need to do this unwords thing. I'm going to be honest, I didn't even know it existed, so thank you, LLM, for helping me there. But I actually just think it should be um, last parts. Right, so the idea is I'm going to get three blue, and that's going to be all. And I just call this S, so not to confuse it. This is the string coming in. I'm going to call words on it, and to parse the color, I'm going to do this 
I'm going to read an int and I'm going to read a thing. So let's, let's just try that. And so parse color three blue. Yeah. And if I do like 13 red, there you go. Perfect. Okay. So now I've got the, that part of it. So within each round, I'll have multiple of those. Um, Let's just look at the words function. Is there a way for me to... Is there another split function? I don't want to split at. Lines, words. Data list split on. A, B. Okay, so that's what we want um, for this next part, right? Did I use that before in the previous one? That's funny. If I had to like look it up again, that's that's how I feel about. What are you complaining about? So now if I do like a parse round, I'm going to presume I'm going to get this part right here. And so I want to say like parse round S, um, It's not going to look like this. Uh, why is it doing that? Okay. Uh, okay, we'll just leave this for now. But the first thing we want to do is where parts is equal to split on comma space. I presume because there's a space after each of these. So we want to split on comma space. And so now I will have a bunch of parts. And the question is, how do I fill? How do I find the right parts? Um, uh, so where so like, for example, red equals parts or will filter on uh, count color color equals red I don't need the count oh but I want to return the first part of it so we're gonna filter first and do the head of that and then we'll do the Head of that. Okay. 
Okay, let's see. This is where the rubber hits the road. Oh, I, I'm I'm getting back a tuple. So it's not head, it's a uh, first. Is that right? says couldn't match type car with a string so I'm gonna get parts is split on oh I want to uh... I want to map right here I want to map Parse color on parts. Right? Yo, that worked. Possibly. Okay, oh, oh, it did the red. I need to do same with green and blue. Do something like that so I don't have to, oh, I don't need to do the dollar sign that's saying it's redundant, that's true. Because now I'm not doing it anymore. And this function, I feel like I'm doing the same thing here with all of these. So I could probably write a function to do that. Okay, but let's just make sure it works first. Oh. Thirteen, ten, twelve, red, green, blue. What if I move remove one? Does it work? Ooh, okay, it doesn't. So if there is no head, so what do you do if it's not there? This is interesting. I'm trying to build this parser myself. There's, It's possible that there's some way that you could do this with like some other way. I'd be interested if, if someone that knows more about Haskell said like Rascal knows how to do this. But so why is this an issue is if there's no green, if there's no blue, this head doesn't work. Um, is there like a head maybe? Okay, so this is this guy saying pattern matching with my function, then I could handle the head case. So that is an interesting question. Could I put this in a function 
in such a way that um, it would do that. Let, let's just, yeah, I think that's probably the smartest way to do that. So let's do this as well. I wanted to put this into a, uh, a function. So let's do color match. And if you give me a string and uh, um, int string, I will give you that, right? If you give me the color, I check it against C, that's that part right there. So now could we write this function So we can say color matches, uh, or uh, is color matches a good word? Uh, color find. And you give me a bunch of colors and I will return the one that matches. Um, Is that right? Do is that what I want to do? I have a, this color match function which does this, and now I want to do. I essentially want to do the filter function. Uh, so we'll call it that color filter. And I'm just going to call the filter on it to start. ETA reduce. We saw that the other day. Oh, it's not going to return an int. It's going to return an int string, but only the ones that match. Now I can do the color find. Which is going to be this. And we can say uh, where... Uh, where color is equal to color. Do you ever, <laughs> do you ever look at a word and feel like you're not spelling it correctly? Color filter. I'm recording. I can help you in a minute, okay? Yeah, you can make me one. Okay, where, color equals color filter color uh let's just call this match where color equals color filter color so we're gonna have this where clause that will help us find uh so i want to do the case where Yeah, this is not quite it. I, I want to do the case now where the color filter is empty. In this case, I want, oh, I don't need the int string. I just need an int. So where the match is in, is an empty match, I'm going to return zero. Otherwise, how does this thing look again? Do the first of head match. Couldn't match expected type int string. Color find color. Oh, uh. I'm going to have 
this, right? There we go, that's better. So just to recap, I have a color match where I'm going to check to see if the color is equal to the one in the tuple. And then I'm going to have this color filter, which given a list is going to return the filters of those matches. Now that I understand these, I can probably combine them all into one, but it helps sometimes to, at least for me, to put them out in their own little functions. Then I do a color find where I call the color filter to get the matches. And then I, if there's no matches, it's zero. Otherwise, I'm going to do the first head. So all of these will then become color find red, color find green, color find blue. So now if I do this, it does work good. Oh, I did that in the wrong order. Okay. So now we're parsing around noise. So if we go back and look at the input, we now have a single round. And so now each game is going to have an ID and multiple rounds. Well, you can see how long this is taking me to do this just because I'm unfamiliar with like in rust it's really simple to do just like a split and then a parse I'll get better at this I'm sure and there's probably an easier way I would love for someone to show me hey here's how I do the parsing in Haskell um, there might be a, a much simpler way to to do that so Okay, so, but if I do a parse game, what does that look like? Um, let's just see what it does. I split on dot space and ID is head parts. That's right, right? Uh, read head parts. Now that's actually gonna give me this. So I want to like uh, split this again. Uh, I guess that's words though, and it's going to be last of words. So I'm going to do words of head parts. Let's see here. I Look, mods lisp. I'm gonna do words to get the pieces, and I'm gonna do the. Uh, last of those. Like that. So how, if you do it without the things, is it read last words? And then rounds, I'm going to call parse round and I'm going to split on colon space. So I map parse round with a split on for last of parts. There's only going to be two parts here, right? So, okay, should we see if that worked? Four zero three one two six zero two zero ID one. What well, it worked. Okay. Okay, so that's not too tough. That's not too tough. Um now. So what's next? Sorry, I'm dealing with bird hair or sorry beard hair bird hair that's interesting 
Um, I don't like to edit out things because I, my goal is, my hope is through these videos that you guys will like see what it's like to do actual programming. I mean, I'm sure many of you watching this probably are already programmers, but you understand there's inter interruptions and things that happen. It's it's just kind of fun to to see that that's really how it is, and you're not the only person. Um, I so what do I want to do now? Now I can parse each game. So now the question is, right, if we go back to the thing, I want to test if they're valid. And what, what is it valid? There should be less than 12, less than 13, and less than 14. So each round should um, be valid. So I can do some kind of chaining where I'm going to, like, test the validity of each round, and all of them should be valid. Otherwise, I don't include that thing, right? So let's break that up into parts and then we can clean stuff up later. So we can do like, um, uh, have a valid round function where uh, it's not gonna look like this, but we can say where, um, Actually, I, I don't think I need anything here. I can just say uh, red is less than or equal to 12 and green is less than or equal to 13 and blue is less than or equal to 14. So then I can do valid a valid game where I basically just say all valid round rounds. Yeah, there you go. Um, oh, but I do. How does this? Uh, let, let's just start with this. Um, I. Okay, so this is okay. I'm gonna let games equals map parse game lines content valid games equals filter. So I'm gonna filter the games and then I'm going to print the length of the valid games. That's not, I also like to do the put stir line. So I can do P1 like this. Um, but this is not it. I'm going to filter by valid games and then I want to, it's not the length of them. It is the sum of the IDs. So it's going to be like sum of, uh, the map of, So like this. The constructor game should have two arguments, but it was given one. Let's just look Haskell. Uh, this is not what I want. I just want to, I essentially want to pull out the ID, right? The constructor game should have two arguments, but was given one.
in pattern game ID, the first argument of uh, a game is this right here, right? Is it like this? I, what am I missing here? Okay. 26.32, that was the correct answer, right? Okay, so just to recap again, uh, we're first going to parse the game, and that's what most of this code is, is parsing it, right? So we read head parts to get the color, and last parts to get the count of the color, and uh, then the parse round, we do this color match, color filter, and color find to get like the correct color that's associated with each thing. And then that will give us a round. And then for the game, we can just call parse around for each of the rounds. And then we can uh, get the game ID. So then to solve part one, uh, again, this is the simpler part of it. The parsing seemed harder for me, which would uh, be interesting. Maybe as I have time, I'll read up on this. All I really needed to do was uh, filter for the valid games which is just these two functions, and then sum up their IDs. I had a little struggle figuring out this syntax right here for the lambda expression, but we got there. That's not too hard, part one. Um, okay, so we can look at part two, and then maybe we can try and clean some of this stuff up, and we'll be done with this video. So what changes in part two? We still have the same game logic, but um, he wants us to know what the minimum number of red, green, and blues were that are were required to play each of the games. So in game one, it needs four because in each of the rounds, the highest number of red used was four. And the same, so two green, the highest used was two green in each round. And six blue because... Uh, the highest was six blue in each round. So I feel like I could do pretty easily do like a, a map to just pull out the specific color and then just do a max on that uh, list that comes back. And that will give me the max red, green, and blue. And then there's a power function that he wants you to do, which is basically you multiply those numbers together. So four, two, and six gives you 48 for game one. And then he wants to know the sum of all of the games, not just the invalid games, all games. So we're gonna pull out the max of each color, multiply those values together, and produce a power. So this power function feels like it goes on the game itself. Uh, so if we have like a power game in oh uh, no 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 the power function is on the round right um no it is on the game because we want to do the highest for each round And it will be like max red, green, and blue. Uh oh, here we go again. Oh, there's no, it should be that.
Couldn't match. Huh? Hmm. I have a, I want a game. Couldn't match expected time int with actual type round int. Okay, we'll figure that out in a second. So max red is going to be the max of um, we want to pull out the reds for each round. Like that. Same thing for the blue. I'd be interested if, uh, maybe we'll talk about this later, but it's, it would be interesting if there's some way to do this simpler. Okay, so how how come this doesn't work? Couldn't match expected type int. Okay, so let's just try this first one and just try this out. So we'll say let game equal blah. Oh. So we let max e uh, max. How do I do that? Max red of game sorry I was spending too much time thinking not enough time explaining my thought I'm just trying to like test out test this out on this side so max red game rounds is equal to max map around oh I'm missing print here It's telling me it's a function. So I'm missing something. Max red game rounds is equal to max. What? What is that? Maybe I'm misunderstanding what. 
the max function does. Oh, it's called maximum, huh? Maximum. Okay, so is that why my thing was broken? So if I do power game, Forty-eight. There we go. We got it. So for part two, then it's just going to be sum of map power all games, not valid. Sixty-nine, six twenty-nine. Is that what I got the first time? Sixty-nine, six twenty-nine. Yep. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that was a little weird. Took me a little while to figure this out. It's not max. Max is the max of two values, apparently. Maximum is a maximum over a map. It's just my ineptitudes in Haskell. Um, but the part two solution is basically iterate all over, the, over all the games, calculate the power of the game, which is the maximum value of reds, greens, and blues, and sum those up. So in the time that we have left, is there something that we can do to simplify some of this code? I am curious. Let's think about this a minute. The parse color function seems pretty clean, at least from what I understand of Haskell. Uh, this color find thing is interesting to me. I actually don't know how to parse this stuff very well in Haskell. Like the thoughts that are going through my head is, is there some kind of maybe option that you could put here as opposed to this? Like you do the head and then you do a maybe on it. I, I don't know. Valid round, a valid game are where all the rounds are valid. Uh, you could probably combine these ones. I haven't, you know, you don't treat a like a class the same in Haskell as you do Java. So like you, or at least if you look at how I implemented it in Go too, you see I kind of had these structs where I had like the game and I could calculate the power of the game and I don't think I did it for the round because it was just simple enough to do a, a, a mapping like this. Um, so I guess I don't know if I need this parse round function or valid round function. I could probably do the valid, I could probably do it in this valid game. You definitely like simplify some of this code. Like what I'm thinking is, is you could do where, yeah, like that. Just basically take this chunk and put it down in there. You say, oh, a valid game is where all of the rounds are valid rounds and valid round is where it's less than 12, 13, 14. That works. Um, Like it'd be interesting to, how do you extract? One thing I would like to know is how do you extract values? Like So maybe we can just search that up really quick. Haskell extract value from a data type. Okay, like that, I mean, this isn't really what's happening. I'm not really doing pattern matching in these cases. Like the, <laughs> okay. Uh... 
yeah, this looks like it's doing a similar function. I, I would be interested to know if there's some simpler way of doing this. I mean, this is not... You're doing the same thing essentially, right? As if you think about the way this works, it it probably compiles to not much different than something along this line. You can see I'm doing the exact same thing right here, right? On the uh, Rust side, I'm mapping each round to the specific color. I'm doing the same thing here. It just looks funny doing it this way to me, but maybe that's just, again, my inabilities in Haskell and my need to like better understand some of the ways that it works and the ways that, the, that it looks. Yeah, so I guess uh, what I would definitely say is, and I'll probably add this to the thing, I'm definitely interested in how everyone else is doing parsing in Haskell. Um, I feel pretty comfortable in parsing in Rust if you look at the way that I do these things in Rust. It's not uncommon to see things like this. You may use regex to do stuff. Sometimes what I'll do instead of keeping the iter is I'll just... Uh, collect the iter and so I just have like now I just have a vector of pieces that I can mess with um, anyway there's there's Haskell day two solved so far these haven't been tough and what's nice with the Haskell ones is once you get past like the parsing phase the actual like finding the solution is not tough because it's very functional in nature right I just do a sum of a map over the rounds where they're valid games or the filter valid, valid games for part one. And then I just calculate the power for each game and that's easily with the you know, summing of a map of those. So uh, I think in that sense, it shows you like how cool Haskell can be is like, this is what you do to like solve the problem. Again, it's Rust has a lot of that functional style in it. So the solution looks the same, right? So you can see here in Rust, I'm doing a, a, a filter for the valid games and I'm getting out the ID and I'm summing them up. And then for the last one, I'm iterating over the games. I'm mapping the pow mapping to the, them to their powers and then summing those up. So in the end, these two solutions look pretty similar just because they're both functional in nature. It's the parsing that looks a little bit different. And so I, totally love to hear what people think about the way that I did the parsing and um, how you would do the parsing for day two. Okay, we will see you guys next time for day three. Um, talk to you later.